Normally when we think about water management, we think about irrigation. And in 2012, we had a tremendous drought in this part of the country and we had several center pivot irrigation systems that went in. And in fact, if you'd had a center pivot operating in 2012, you could almost have paid for that rig in that one year alone. And that's a huge investment, that's a long-term investment. And that's one thing that we think about is applying water when the crop needs it. Another thing that we need to think about with water management is uh, getting water off the land when we have excess water. So there's two types of water management for drainage, and that's surface drainage through uh, furrows or drainage ditches or those type of things. And also there's subsurface drainage with tile, plastic tile drainage. And tile drainage is nothing really new. It's just sort of new to our part of the country. They Farmers started uh, installing tile drainage about 15 years ago in northwest Tennessee. And actually tile drainage got started in 1838 in Seneca County, New York, when a farmer by the name of John Johnston started installing tile by hand on his farm. And he wound up tiling about 320 acres. But even though he's known as the father of tile drainage in the United States, he actually brought that technology with him from the farm that he was on in Scotland. So it's not really new technology, it's just new to our area. You might want to think about some reasons why you would want to use tile drainage. First, you want to provide better growing conditions for the crop. You want to provide better rooting structure. And you might want to improve crop yield. I have spoken to several farmers in our area. Tile drainage does a lot of things for you. Number one, it makes it where you can get into that field quicker earlier in the spring if you do need to do tillage. If you're in a no-till situation, it allows you to go into that field quicker to plant the crop. It, uh, it also helps, obviously, boost yields. Uh, you get better germination of plant seeds and more likely to keep a crop stand. Uh, fields that have had problems in the past, you might get them planted. If you get a big rain, uh, you'd lose the stand and you might have a field that you'd have to replant, replant more than one time. Whereas tile drainage allows that water to drain through the soil profile and allows that water to drain away from the field and the odds of keeping the stand is greatly improved. We've already mentioned improving yields. That's one thing that we can do with tile drainage. Uh, higher soil temperatures in the spring with that soil being able to air out, dry out, uh, improving that drainage helps boost the temperature, which allows you to plant quicker. And also, one thing that we don't think about sometimes, you can take a piece of ground that is traditionally wet, and you can improve the value of the property itself. So it would have a higher resale value if you ever decided to sell. There's a lot of factors that go into planning uh, the installation of a tile drainage system. Soil type, soil texture, all that's going to make a determination. It, de it determines how close you have to put the tile together. Uh, it determines how deep you can run your tile, how high the water table is, the elevation of the field, the slope of the field. Uh, one of the things that's always important to think about is where am I going to carry this water to once I've drained it out of my field? You've got to have access to a drainage outlet, either a ditch or a creek or some type of surface drainage, you need an outlet to be able to carry that water to that. If you're interested in doing tile drainage, one of the things you want to consider is uh, who you're going to get to do that. Now we've got farmers in the area that actually have tile plows and they're putting down their own drainage systems. But we also have folks that are in the business commercially and they run specialized equipment and they can come in and do that kind of work for you, but you want a quality job because this is usually a one and done thing. Uh, tile drainage can last 20, 30 years. We really don't know how long it can last in the soil. Uh, it's very low maintenance, so there's not any maintenance, any maintenance cost involved really as compared to center pivot irrigation. And one of the things we want to think about is return on investment. How long does it take for this investment to pay? I've had farmers tell me that they feel like they've almost bought the farm again. Installation cost in our area runs $750 to $850 an acre. So it is a pricey installation process. Some, uh, depending on your situation, it could run a thousand dollars or more 
per acre, depending on how closely you're having to run those parallel drainage tiles, those laterals. It depends on uh, the type of soil you're in, the size of the field, the amount of tile you have to lay. All those things go into and factor the general cost. We think about a return on investment in about three to 10 years. So it can pay out fairly quickly. We think you'll see changes in the soil profile and changes in yield in as, in as few as five years or less. I've had producers tell me that they noticed changes in their yield, improvements in yield in the very first year. Well, how much yield improvement can I expect to get if I put down tile drainage? Well, generally we think 20 to 25% yield improvement on corn. Uh, very conservatively, I'd say 10 to 30 bushel per acre yield improvement. I've heard of much higher yield improvement depending on the type of ground that the tile was installed in. On soybeans, about a 25% yield improvement. We typically, typically think about five to 10 bushels per acre yield improvement on soybeans. Uh, the farm that we were on today, that farm was primarily a soybean continuous soybean producing farm. Maybe two years out of 10, you might get to plant corn if the spring weather was good enough to plant on. Now that farm is a corn followed by wheat, followed by soybean rotation. And in fact, my variety test plots are on that farm this year. I've had variety test plots on that farm uh, in earlier years after it was tiled. The yields are superb. That's usually one of the first fields he goes to to plant. What was once known as a wet bottom is now one of the earliest planted fields that he has. The field directly behind me uh, has tile drainage installed. It's been there for three or four years now. And they had about an inch and a quarter of rainfall here yesterday. And we see that the tile system is working properly. We've got water exiting uh, out of the discharge pipe here. And actually we've put an elbow on this pipe so that in uh, a little later in the, in the growing season, we'll actually turn, swivel that elbow up, and we will block the water from draining out of this field and try to catch some water table uh, subsurface type irrigation for this crop. This is one of the key parts of installing a tile drainage system. You've got to have a place for this water to discharge. You've got to have an outlet, and usually that's in some type of drainage ditch or a creek or something like that, but you've got to have somewhere to go. Today we're installing some sensors. One will track just the height of the water table itself. That sensor is about five foot in the soil. And then we have another group of sensors like you might use for an irrigation unit. And those sensors are placed at 30 inches, 18 inches, and six inches. And it will track soil moisture throughout the growing season because as the growing season goes on, we hope to get rainfall. And we've got the pipe turned out or turned up, not allowing the tile to drain. And if we happen to get a big rain event, we don't want to flood out the roots down below. And we have no way of knowing uh, the depth of the water table. So we're hoping to take these sensors. And with these sensors, we'll be able, with Bluetooth technology, we'll be able to remotely uh, determine where the water table's at, how the soil moisture is running at the 6, 18, and 30 inch depths, so we can hopefully do a better job of managing subsurface water during the growing season. Jeff has provided you with a, a summary and overview of drainage systems and their benefits. What I like to do is introduce you to a new project where we'll be, we are monitoring a drainage system in Weekly County, Tennessee. And, and the goal of this is to create a better plant growth environment through drainage. We're gonna be looking for uh, things like how well excess water is removed by the drainage system. And then the opposite, during drought conditions, when should we uh, stop the drainage to retain water for, for crop use? One of the most important uh, point pieces of equipment we will be using for this is a water level sensor. Uh, it will be placed at, it is placed at the bottom of a five foot observation well to see how far the water table is from the ground surface and from the drains. So how this works is, if the sensor's at the bottom of, in the soil five feet at the bottom of this observation well, it's measuring the level water above it. So if the water level is measured at three feet, that means that the water table was two feet from the ground surface because the sensor is five feet down. And if the drains are at 
at two feet down, then that means that, that the water table is right at the drainage level. So we'll be looking for things like uh, how water gets, how far water gets above the drains during wet periods and how it responds during wet periods, how quickly it drains when, when rain stops, and then whether the water table drops below the drains. That would be due to things like natural drainage or crop water use that would keep drawing water out of the soil below the drains. Through, through this understanding, what we'd hope to do is say, are, are, we, are we putting these drains in at a good depth and a good spacing? But I think more importantly, something we can take action with more easily is observing the water table and then knowing when to stop the drains to retain water during a drought. So that's one of the key things we'll be looking at. To help us in this process, in addition to the water table sensors, we'll be looking at, we'll be using some water, soil water sensors to help us know what the, the conditions for plant growth are. We'll be placing these sensors at 6, 18, and 30 inches. And the sensors would indicate whether the soil's too wet and there's no oxygen in the soil, which is bad for plant growth, or whether we're drying to a point where water uptake by the crop is being inhibited and could be inhibiting yield. And it'll also tell us when it's in a good range for, for health, healthy crop growth. Um, these are sensors that we have used in a lot of our experiments at research stations and, and in demonstrations and producers' fields. So we have a pretty good feel for these sensors and how well they work and when we'll be in a good range for crop growth. And, and a final sensor we're going to use is a rain gauge that lets us know how much rain's being applied and we can measure that. So we'll be able to, to look at things like after rain, how much does say a half inch rain raise the water table and how fast is, and if there's no rain for, for, for a period, we'll be able to quantify that and, and see how fast it's drying out. Um, rainfall is the main driver of when we're wet and dry, so we wanna measure that to know what we're really looking at in terms of soil moisture and water table level. All these um, measurements will be stored in a data logger at, at 15 minute intervals, and then a cell phone and a cell antenna inside the data logger will send, send that, those measurements to the cloud where we can access them via the web. And what that means is we have information, information in almost real time. So I can be sitting at my uh, office in, in Knoxville at my computer and see what's going on real time. Uh, Jeff can be um, scouting fields with a cell phone and see what's going on in this field. Or David and Andy can be in their sprayer with a tablet and they'll see, have access to this information. All this is powered by a small solar panel and these rechargeable batteries. The equipment we users are using is from Meter Group and the data logger is called a ZL6. Um, the rain gauge is called an EC100. It's a tipping bucket type rain gauge and each tip is equivalent to point, point or one hundredth of an inch of rain. The soil uh, water sensors are called MPS2s, which stands for soil matrix potentials, which again, maybe the best way to think about that is soil matrix potentials, the opposite of tension. It's, it'll give us a measurement of how hard it is for the plants to remove water from the soil. Um, I should let you know that the MPS2s have been replaced with MPS6s, and now that sensor is being called a Teros 21 if you go to look for it. Um, all the difference is it's the exact same sensor, but it has more calibration points, so it should be a, a little better calibration than the ones we've been using if you pick up some M Terrace 21s. The Hydras 21 is the water level sensor that we're using. Again, it's measuring the weight of water above this sensor to give us a water level. 